time varying fields ampere maxwell's law series on electromagnetic field theory lecture number 3.20 in the present session the focus is on ampere maxwell's law and also for some time we consider another equation continuity namely continuity equation ampere maxwell's law has certain importance in electromagnetic field theory it uh, connects its importance lies in the fact that it is able to connect time varying electric field with magnetic field along with uh, faraday's law this particular ampere maxwell's law it is able to predict uh, the presence of radiation in dynamic fields the second one which we are going to consider in the present session that is continuity equation it has certain special status in electromagnetic field theory sometimes it is considered on par with the four maxwell's equations it has several different forms all those forms are introduced in the present session now let us move further ampere's circuit law normally it is introduced to the students when they are in study magnetic fields like several other laws this law also has integral form and differential form both these forms are being shown here integral form gives mmf around a closed path is equal to current passing through any surface that is enclosed by that particular closed path which is magnetic field intensity j is current density its differential form is curl h is equal to j h is magnetic field intensity j is again current density the basic point is this law it was initially derived for static fields and when applied for static fields it is able to give perfectly valid correct results but when it is applied to dynamic situations this particular law both the forms they start exhibiting certain inconsistency in its results after finding the inconsistency in the results or inadequacy of this law in dealing with the dynamic situations the law has been modified by maxwell resulting in ampere maxwell's law before going to the correction let us understand first the inadequacy or inconsistency in the results given by this particular law first we consider the inconsistency in the results with integral form of the equation you consider a voltage source connected to a capacitor parallel plate capacitor consider two surfaces s1 and s2 both bounded by the same closed path this is the closed path where uh, integration left side mmf to find mmf is performed and with this uh, closed path as boundary one can have two surfaces one is let us say plane surface s1 another is uh, somewhat curved surface which is passing through the dielectric in between the capacitor Note S1 is cutting the conductor, whereas S2 is cutting the dielectric. Now, when Ampere's law in integral form is applied in steady state or DC conditions, the current crossing the surface either S1 or S2, and hence enclosing path is same equal to zero. However, when capacitor is charging or discharging, that is when dynamic situations, time varying situations are prevailing, the currents crossing the surfaces are not same. Through S1, current is non-zero, whereas that crossing s2 is zero if ampere's law is applied now to find out let us say field intensity it gives different answers depending upon the surface or current that is picked up leading to lack of inconsistency in the result to have more better understanding let us see here what is the law h dot dl equal to i enclosed or j dot da now to find h normally we evaluate the right hand side we evaluate left hand side we evaluate right hand side also for the time being consider right hand side surface here integration is over a surface and this surface can be anything depending upon our convenience we can select any surface that is enclosed by the path that we are integrating on the left hand side here we consider two surfaces these two surfaces they are able they are giving same result same answer when dc situation is prevailing during dc situation no current travels through the conductor no current travels through the dielectric so both the surfaces give same result that is zero 
so there is no problem as far as ready state conditions are concerned. But when dynamic situation is there like charging of the capacitor. During charging, current exists in the conductor that is current exists through S1, but current doesn't exist in S2. So if you consider S1, non-zero. If you consider S2, current is zero. So two different results are coming for right hand side of the equation. Therefore, H also become different depending upon the current which you select in evaluating this particular integral equation. So it results in consistency. This difficulty can also be understood. This inadequacy of the Ampere's law can also be understood by considering that equation in differential form. Differential form it is del cross H equal to J. Now consider divergence both sides. Divergence of del cross H equal to divergence of J. Now left hand side is always zero vector it is a vector calculus uh, identity or mathematical identity whether it is a magnetic field or electric field or whatever it may be it is a vector identity it is always zero left hand side but when it comes to right hand side this is zero only when static case in dynamic situations it is not zero according to continuity equation which we are going to see very soon it is non-zero so when it comes to static situation either integral form or differential form they are perfectly okay valid but when it comes to dynamic it is failing now this situation it was observed by James Clerk Maxwell and he proposed a correction to Ampere's circuit law. After correcting by Maxwell, this equation is found to be valid both for static and dynamic cases. What is the correction? He added a new term to the right hand side of the equation. The term is dou by dou d by dou t. It is called displacement current. D is displacement density. Do D by do T is called displacement current. It is proportional to yield time variations and permittivity of the medium. The first term now represents exclusively conduction current. This is conduction current, whereas this one is displacement current. Conduction current is proportional to field intensity and conductivity of the medium. Of course, this is always equal to sigma into E which is called Ohm's law in point form. This is the differential form of the equation. Of course, it can be converted into integral form also, which I am going to show, show very soon. The correction term implies time varying electric field is equivalent to magnetic field. This is an important uh, consequence, uh, an important implication. Faraday's law says time varying magnetic field is equivalent to electric field, whereas this law says time varying electric field is equivalent to a magnetic field. This can be, this is uh, as I already mentioned, it is an integral form. It can be converted into different integral form also and converted it appears like this. Integral h dot, h dot dl equal to integral j plus dot d by dot t dA. Here a new term is required to be introduced to you. The conduction part of the current right hand side involves two terms. One is conduction current, another is displacement current. The conduction part of the current indicates dissipation and hence losses. Dissipation means converting electricity into heat. The ratio of conduction to displacement current magnitude. The ratio conduction to current to displace current conduction to displacement current magnitudes. It is called a last tangent. Last tangent. It can be expressed as tangent of, of angle theta between displacement and total and conduction between displacement and total. What is this? It can be expressed as tangent of angle between displacement and total current. Right. This is total current. This is total current. This is displacement current. This is conduction current. Tan theta is uh, Jc by Jd. This is conduction current, whereas Jd is displacement current. One can find it as sigma by omega epsilon. The parameter loss tangent is used frequently to classify a material into conductor or dielectric. If it is more than one, then the material is conductor. If it is less than one, it is considered as dielectric. Sometimes, uh, instead of theta, delta is uh, used. In fact, delta is uh, more commonly used than delta to represent the angle between displacement current and total current. Now, how Maxwell was able to fix the inconsistency in Ampere's circuit law or how correction was made? What is the process that has uh, taken place in correction, correction process? To understand that, consider the Ampere's law for study magnetic fields. Let us suppose by adding x, this law, which is for uh, static fields or study fields, this law is made valid. 
applicable even for dynamics. Now apply divergence both sides. It results in del dot del cross h. Div curl h equal to divergence j plus divergence x. Now, of course, this is the div curl is always zero. This color is always zero. Okay. After observing this fact, come to continuity equation and divergence loss. This is continuity equation. Del dot j equal div j equal to dou rho by dot t. And the divergence loss is del dot d equal to rho. Combining these two, what we have is del dot j equal to minus div dou d by dot t. Now, we use this particular relation in the ambient state. We replace del dot j by minus del dot dou d by dou t. So, in the left hand side, it is always 0. Del dot j means minus del dot dou d by dou t. Here it is del dot x. Now, solving this equation, one can find x equal to dou d by dou t. Therefore, if you replace x by dou d by dou t, then this is Ampere's circuit law for dynamic fields. To check the validity after correction, validity of this law after correction, we consider integral form first and then differential form and see whether it is able to give proper results. Now, to check integral form, we consider same situation which we considered to understand inconsistency in case of integral form of Ampere's law that is a capacitor, but this time we consider a sinusoidally time varying source. Now it is sinusoidal. Same surface, same curve, everything. This is the closed path. This is one surface S1, another surface is through dialect. Now sinusoidal source. Therefore, here dynamic conditions are prevailing. The current through surface S1 is conduction through S1. S1 cuts the conductor, therefore, current is conduction. It can be found IC equal to C D V by DT. This is uh, the current through a capacitor. Current through capacitor and voltage across the capacitor are related through this relation from circuit theory might have come across but v is v is vm sine omega t substituting you will be getting differentiating you will be getting this kind of relation t equal to epsilon a by d capacitance the current through surface s2 is a displacement one and it can be found through d equal to epsilon e this is from gauss law but e equal to v by d v equal to vm sin omega t this is the voltage i have applied vm sin omega t is the voltage applied now id equal to area into current density so a into jd equal to dou d by dou t d equal to epsilon e so dou e by dou t e is v by d v by d uh, using that, you can find epsilon a by d vm cos omega t. So, notice these two currents are same. S1 is S2. So, what does it mean? Either you, either surface can be used and both the surfaces gives the same result. So, right hand side in this equation h dot dl, whatever surface you consider either S1 or S2, both give the same result, yes, uh, same same current. Therefore, h dot dl is h, h becomes same. Now, to check the validity after correction, we consider another form that is differential. This is differential form. This is differential form after applying divergence both sides. Del dot del cross h del cross h equal to del dot j del dot dou d by dou t. Of course, this fellow is always zero. That's why zero. This fellow is zero. So, how to, but um, unless we prove that this right hand side is also zero, we cannot claim that integral uh, differential form gives, differential form uh, after correction gives you, gives us the consistent result. So, what we do is right now, under static cases, it is perfectly okay. Why? Left hand side, it is always zero, vector identity. Now, when it comes to right hand, zero, uh, right hand side, del dot j is zero according to continuity equation for static case. Second term is also because dou d by dou t. For static cases, dou d by dou t equal to zero. Therefore, this is also equal to zero. Left hand side, it is zero. Right hand side, is, it is also zero. So, so, as far as static case is concerned, no problem. Now, come to dynamic situation. Under dynamic situation, del dot j is dou rho by dou t. Minus dou rho by dou t. Minus dou rho by dou t. Del dot dou d by dou t. You can take del inside. It means divergence of uh, d. Divergence of d equal to rho. Therefore, what happens if you take del inside? It becomes dou rho by dou t. So one is minus, another is plus. So adding gives you results. So in case of dynamic, in, in dynamic situations also, left hand side is, is always zero. Right hand side is also zero. So it implies that uh, after correction, actually this law after correction is called Maxwell Ampere's law. So Ampere Maxwell's law is uh, now working 
very well with dynamic equations also. Now a few points regarding continuity equation. Continuity equation is a precise mathematical statement of charge conservation principle that is charge can neither be created nor destroyed. Equation of continuity is the only one which is considered on par with Maxwell's four equations in electromagnetic field theory. Sometimes it is even mentioned as part of Maxwell's equation section. So this fellow has as much importance as as Maxwell's equations in electromagnetic field theory. Its importance in field theory is its ability to justify Maxwell's correction to Ampere's circuit law. It has several forms, static, dynamic, M domain, phase domain, which are described below. First, let me give a statement of continuity equation. The net current due to flow of charges through a closed surface is equal to time rate of decrease of the charge within the volume bounded by the surface. For your understanding, this equation is actually three-dimensional version of a single dimensional equation dq by dt of course with some modification minus. This is quite well known to the students, first year, second year students. This is single dimensional equation. This is the one which usually students encounter in circuit theory. If you <clears throat> expand it, transform it so that it is applicable to three dimensional situation, it results in del dot j equal to minus two rho by dot t. Here j is current density. Because here current is simply current, j is current density. I is in amperes, J is amperes per meter square. Rho is volume charge density or volumes per meter cube. Now to understand this law, consider a closed surface enclosing a uh, volume containing net charge Q as shown in the figure. When this charge is flowing out, naturally it results in certain amount of current, current or current density. This current must be equal to rate of change of charge enclosed by the surface. When charge is moving out, naturally the current, the, the charge inside the, the volume, within the volume or inside the surface decreases. So the charge current relation can be put in this form to this situation, I equal to minus dq by dt. But I is given by closed surface integral j dot dA and Q is given by rho d tau. Now, I don't think it requires any further explanation. These are the things that are introduced while studying electrostatics and uh, study magnetic fields. Now, substituting, it results in, in the continuity equation integral form. Of course, it can, then it can be converted into various other forms. All the forms are different forms of continuity equation. They are uh, shown in a diagram. This is continuity equation, static form, dynamic form. Static form means differential form, integral form, both forms exist. D dot j equal to 0, j dot d equal to 0. This is integral form, dc, static form. When it comes to dynamic form, time domain, phase domain, time domain means arbitrary time variations, phase domain means sinusoidal time variations. Differential form is del dot j equal to minus dou rho by dou t. This is what we used. In the, deriv in the derivation of Maxwell's correction. This can be converted into integral form also, which appears integral j dot dA is minus dou rho by dou t d tau. Here d tau is differential volume. Phasor form, it has two forms, differential form, integral form. In differential form, del dot j equal to minus j omega rho. Integral form is del dot j d tau is integral j omega rho. So in the present session, we are able to have a fairly good understanding regarding Ampere-Maxwell's law as well as continuity equation. Enough for this session. Mm -hmm.